of all the misguided, wrong-headed, and just plain terrible policies that the self-styled progressives are forcing upon citizens, climate hysteria appears to be by far the most damaging. Apparently, these climate policies are making everything more expensive, costing people's jobs and economic growth, and ultimately harming the environment by driving investment away to countries like China with rather abysmal environmental records. And what's worse is that people driving these terrible policies, far left-wing politicians and virtue-signaling celebrities are not the ones suffering most from the consequences of their green, woke, narcissistic policies. Welcome back again, viewers. We've got yet another exposition on the hypocrisies and hogwash of the left wing to discuss in today's video. So stay around and watch the video till the very end. You know, even when it is abundantly evident that global factors are the driving force behind the present dilemma around inflation, a potential recession, increasing heating expenses and power rates, with rises in Canada of upwards of 50% or more, as well as surging food prices, the economic crisis can also be traced back to the well-funded campaign that the Green Movement has been waging against fossil fuels. Already the policies of President Joe Biden have resulted in an economy that is $100 billion less yearly than it otherwise would have been if it hadn't been for the widespread limitations on drilling on federal and offshore lands that are part of the United States President's energy policies. And of course, the strategy should have been opposed by genuine progressives who care about the working and middle classes. Meanwhile, it turns out that the growth in the use of oil in the United States last year was four times faster than the growth in the combined use of solar and wind power, and the worldwide data indicate a trend that is quite similar. Flowing from this, a major bias is that oil would still be a major industry in 2040, despite the jihads that are being waged against fossil fuels in North America and the European Union by the likes of Biden and narcissistic Trudeau. And expectedly, the demand for oil would most definitely rise almost everywhere except for the EU, where it will continue to decline. And at this point, two burning questions in terms of geopolitics seem to be, where will future energy come from? Will it come from highly uncontrolled autocratic nations like Iran, Russia, Saudi Arabia, or Venezuela? Or will it come from prospering democracies like Canada and the United States? And on another end, the situation where ever comes to nations like Canada, which have stringent rules being supplanted by countries that are poor and less scrupulous than most expectedly, the environment would unquestionably come out on the losing end. Meanwhile, recent data from Natural Resources Canada estimates that around 600,000 people in Canada are directly or indirectly employed in the oil and gas industry, with the majority of these people living outside of the major population centres of Ontario. And according to research published by TD Canada last year, anywhere between 50 and 75% of these jobs apparently face the possibility of being replaced by 2050. So it's glaring that the environmentally conscious approach that Trudeau is taking won't contribute significantly to the growth of the country's economy. And with high energy prices being the goal of lefties green activists who would rather buy energy from sources outside of North America, there would only continue to be less of an incentive for businesses to locate in Ontario, which of course would pose a more detrimental threat to the manufacturing workers in Canada who suffered greatly during the COVID crisis. Similarly, the unrelenting campaign of Canada's neighbor to the north to eliminate the use of fossil fuels arguably poses a danger to approximately 750 well-paying employment in the industry. And of course, it will not have a direct influence on the cognitive elites that now control progressive politics throughout the world, but it will cause severe suffering for oil riggers, factory employees, and construction workers. Flowing from this, during the midterm elections, you can bet green obsessions could help the Republicans defeat even appealing politicians, such as Ohio's Tim Ryan, who openly supports fracking, but has also backed policies such as the Green New Deal. Democrats and Canadian liberals seem to have failed to understand that the renewable-only net-zero approach tends to raise energy prices, as seen in Germany, which prior to the current crisis had among the highest electricity and fuel prices in the world. Millions of people in California are on the verge of energy poverty, and price-sensitive industries are being encouraged to leave the state as a result of the state's policies, which have driven fuel prices to among the highest in the nation. And in contrast to the generally wealthy people who install solar panels or drive electric vehicles, those in the less temperate and poorer interior suffer under what attorney Jennifer Hernandez calls the Green Jim Crow. And in Canada, current energy policies apparently threaten the living standards of approximately 6.5 million people who are classified as working class. Arguably, 80% of the world's economies still rely on fossil fuels just to make them sustainable and solvent. But it's really bizarre how both Biden and Trudeau share a delusional fixation to shut down everything oil and LNG without any regard for the consequences of their folly. A transitional framework to green energy doesn't even exist yet, let alone a proven alternative power source to rely on fully. 
And it just shows how out of touch with reality these two leaders have become with this fanatical ideology that is destroying the basic fabric of both countries that helped make them the envy of the world. Countries need to put their own geopolitical interests and the economic possibilities of their own people first rather than mindlessly imitating the homilies of zealot environmentalists. Meanwhile, in the event that the Democrats do poorly in the midterm elections, we may witness additional backtracking, although of a more mode-rate kind from both Biden and more reasonable European Greens. And even ultra-green Germany is increasingly keen to tap into the energy resources of North America while even going so far as to explore fracking. It's possible that electoral defeat for Democrats who support mode-rate positions on fossil fuels could prompt the party to rethink its unpopular energy policy. And after November 8, a change toward energy policies that are more pragmatic and practical might begin to define a future in which North America once again shines as a beacon of prosperity for the rest of the globe. And in the case of Canada, for the country's national economic health and political cohesion, a modest change in liberal policy in favor of fossil fuels doesn't seem like a pragmatic remedy with the Trudeau government. Instead, Canada needs a complete cleaning of the pernicious liberal energy policy that is ruining its economy and making living conditions expensive for working-class Canadians. To put it in a better way, the country arguably needs a new, well-informed and government soon enough. And of course, the only party demonstrating some sobriety in this regard has been the Pierre Paul Ever headed Conservative Party. That's it, viewers. What are your thoughts on how both Biden and Trudeau have vilified the oil and gas sector while leaving working class citizens to suffer as a result of their green woke fanatic environmentalism? Please drop your opinion in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, please share our videos with as many people as possible. At the same time, check out the Telegram group where we can discuss affairs that concern our country without fear of being censored for our comments through the group link in the description below. Also keep in mind that we are always determined to boldly expose the hypocrisy of the left wing and mainstream media while keeping you updated and conscious. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.